Oceanographers consider the San Juan Islands the most complex mix of tides and currents anywhere on the U.S. West Coast. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife says it was told that the pens came apart in strong currents starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, August 19th. At least four to 5,000 Atlantic salmon released. It wasn't until Monday, two days later, when the eclipse, which lined the sun and the moon up over our part of the country, was at its zenith. And the combination of the two celestial bodies did not affect tides to the degree logic dictates. On Friday, the tidal exchange from the highest to the lowest near the fishnets totaled nine feet. On Saturday, when the pen was torn apart, it was actually higher, nine and a half feet. Sunday, it was still going up, pushing 10 feet. But Monday, the day of the eclipse, it was actually backing down to less than nine and three quarters feet. The day after the eclipse, lower still. It wasn't the fact that it was an eclipse. It was, I mean, I don't know what happened with the net pen, but, uh, but I will say that this spring tide that happened around the time of the eclipse was not anomalously different than any other spring. I caught up with University of Washington oceanographer and tidal expert Parker McCready on the phone. Spring tide refers to the pull of a new moon, not the spring of the year. And in fact, it might have been a little weaker than, than other ones recently or in the winter. But currents around the pens that day were strong. This government graphic shows currents of up to three and a half knots on Saturday. And those say oceanographers can create some wicked eddies in a bay like the one where the net pens were anchored. In Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.